Vi er vi er godt i gang med det. We're well on our way to achieving what we want to here at Malagor School, but we have only just started. If you go around uh, the school, you'll see some areas where things work very well and other areas that function just like they did before we implemented the changes. I can see that where it's practiced, what we want to achieve, that although we don't have a standard method, that where the work is based on our conceptual framework, you reach the individual child much more effectively. You help each child become much more active in relation to its own learning process. I find that even the younger children show lots of initiative and start different exercises all by themselves, and they start finding out which things they need to work with and what suits them. What's important for this whole system is what one defines as a learning space. In other words, what used to be a classroom and a hallway or corridor is now a location for learning. Some forms of behavior are more suited to this environment. They can be a little more broadly defined than previously. In the past, sitting was the only acceptable thing to do, whereas now one can also move around and learn at the same time. If you go back to when we started the school development process and asked what's necessary for modern teaching methods, everybody said 70 square meters. If the decision had been made then, then we'd have 70 square meters, but no modern teaching methods. The weakness could be that there would be some children that we would overlook in the confusion. But I believe we're already aware of and focused on this. It's one of the questions that we asked ourselves from the beginning. What will happen with the weak children? Well, I think that if you're keeping your eye out for them, they're a bit more visible in the new structure than in the old structure, where they could be more easily hidden. Now, in the new structure, you can clearly see if a child isn't able to cope with their schoolwork, and so we can take action to help them. I actually think that all schools are in some kind of development, and I believe that the development perspective is the most important aspect for a head teacher to focus on. Otherwise, everything remains as it always has been, and nothing happens, nothing changes. I believe one should encourage the broadest possible involvement when venturing into new processes. Of course, the staff you manage should be involved, but one should be willing to include the parents and children too. Try to involve them in these processes. I believe that the experience in this municipality shows that the more broad-based the involvement's been, the stronger the foundation you can build on. The question many have asked me is, isn't it difficult to be a head teacher at a school where the teaching staff work in self-governing teams? Yes, it is difficult, but it's another kind of management, in as much as how it sets out the framework for the teaching staff to act within. As the management, we define this framework in a clear and comprehensible way, to create the necessary understanding and confidence. And within this type of framework, the teaching staff can initiate action rather than react. The most important thing in my work is to see that the school is moving forward, that the school is getting better for the children. That in turn has a positive effect for all teaching staff, and parents sense it right away too. One thing is grades. They reflect something. But there are other things which are just as important. The whole aspect of social development is equally valuable. And you can sense and measure that in some way as a head teacher, as a member of the teaching staff, and as a parent. And hopefully the children can too. Ultimately, it's all about commitment to the job and your concern for the children involved, so that we can offer them better possibilities than existed before.